Hello, hello! I'm talking today about the notorious traitor, Edric Strena. Evidently a lowborn son of the otherwise unknown Ethelric, Edric managed to weasel his way into royal favor. But he was probably less popular among his peers, since contemporary sources all seem to paint him in a distinctly bad light. Indeed, his byname Strena most likely means grasper, a reflection of his greedy and selfish nature. Now, Edric lived at a time when the Kingdom of England was in dire straits, owing to rampant Viking activity as well as weak government. The king, Ethelred, called Unred for his poor judgment and questionable company, had largely turned to appeasement, merely paying the Viking fleets to go away. But there was sharp division among his leading men because of these and other policies. The first we see of Edric Strano is in 1006, when he purportedly had the elderman Elfhelm of York murdered at Shrewsbury. Far from facing punishment, Edric was made elderman of Mercia the following year, and by 1009 he had actually married the king's daughter, Edith. From this position of power, he seems to have had strong influence on royal policy. He was blamed for dividing or disorganizing royal armies, and some suspected that he aimed to preserve his own lands in Mercia, at the very expense of England itself. The Viking threat became increasingly serious as King Sven of Denmark fronted or sponsored repeated Danish raids on England. His associates plundered East Anglia and overran Kent in 1011, and then in 1013 Sven himself landed at Sandwich and swiftly conquered most of the kingdom. Well, this crisis was only narrowly avoided by Sven's timely death the following February, at which his son and heir, Canute, was successfully driven back to Denmark. As the English lords worked to rebuild their fractured realm, we once again find Edric Strana at the center of conspiracy. During a meeting of the Witten at Oxford in 1015, Edric lured two thanes, the brothers Sidgeforth and Morcar, into a private chamber and murdered them. Worse, he then pursued the thanes' attendants to a nearby church, and he burned them all to death. While King Ethelred seems to have condoned these actions, his eldest surviving son Edmund took a stand by marrying Sigefirth's widow, and thereby claiming those forfeited lands for himself. As his father fell increasingly ill that year, Edmund took over the front line of England's defense, yet his chiefest opponent proved to be his own brother-in-law, Edric Strana. The Danish prince Canute soon attempted another invasion of England, and Edric quickly defected to his side. Edmund, called Ironside for his fierce resistance, combated this invasion with a dwindling number of friends into 1016. When King Ethelred died in April of that year, Edmund duly inherited a very troubled kingdom. With the north and east of England lost to Danish conquest, Edmund worked to defend Wessex and parts of Mercia throughout the summer. To some surprise, he claimed a string of victories and kept London under English control. During a particularly fierce battle at Sherston, the traitor Edric Strana apparently attempted subterfuge, claiming that Edmund had died and holding aloft the head of a lookalike called Ordmer. But Edmund rallied the English, and he held the field. His continued success soon prompted the self-serving Edric Strana to desert the Danish army and return to the English. Of course, his reconciliation proved more a liability than an asset. On 18 October 1016, a long and vigorous battle ensued between the English and the Danes at Assendun in Essex. This battle raged all day and into the night, and it was reported that Edric Strana was the first to withdraw his forces. Now, his retreat incited an overall flight of the English army, at which the invader Canute was able to press his advantage. Edric soon defected to the Danes once more. King Edmund determinedly held Wessex until his sudden and fairly convenient death at the end of November 1016. The often traitorous Edric Strana was widely suspected, with one chronicle even claiming that he had sent his son to murder the English king. But it was not to end well for Edric Strana. Though he retained his power in Mercia, he was scarcely trusted by the new king Canute, and in 1017, following yet another conspiracy, he was summarily killed along with several others. That's the life of Edric Strana. Thank you so much for watching.